eigenvectors. Now, one of the very, very interesting properties of these eigenvectors is, is that they are orthogonal with respect to the mass and the stiffness matrix. The way to prove that is to start here uh, with a, any particular eigenvalue and eigenvector pair i, let's say. We pre-multiply both sides by the transpose of phi j. Right, which is a different eigenvector corresponding to a different eigenvalue. And we obtain this equation right here. If we then start and do a similar process with a different eigenvalue, eigenvector pair, let's say j, so we have m phi j, lambda j, k phi j, we transpose that, so here we transpose this equation uh, to obtain this one. Since k and m are symmetric, m transpose and k transpose are simply k and m. And then we post multiply, so that means we multiply from the right hand side by phi i here. We obtain these two equations. Now I want you to take a look at these two equations and tell me what's going on. Well, you can't tell me, right? Because I can't hear you. Uh, but I want you to look at these two equations and determine what's going on. Well, the left-hand side is the same except that lambda i and lambda j are different, right? And that's a key fact. They're distinct. But the right hand side is exactly the same. So how is that possible? Well, the only possibility is that phi j transpose m phi i is equal to zero and phi j transpose k phi i equal to zero, which basically means that modes, sh mode shapes, are orthogonal, not amongst themselves, but with the mass and the stiffness matrix. So this is called the orthogonality property of the mode shapes. Modes are orthogonal with respect to the mass and the stiffness matrix. The other important property is that a mode shape doesn't mean anything by itself in terms of the numbers, right? What matters is the shape. Because if I take a mode shape, like if I start with the eigenvalue problem here and I multiply both sides by a scalar alpha, then I bring that alpha to multiply the mode, I find that if phi is a mode, alpha times phi is also a mode for any alpha, right, that you pick. So you can scale a mode, make it smaller, make it larger, basically multiply the mode shape by a scalar, and that is still a mode. The other important property, if we follow that, is that if we pick a certain kind of scaling, a special kind of scaling, in which we select alpha equals to 1 over the square root of mi, where mi is phi i transpose m phi i, right? In this case, both are the same, i and i. So this is not zero, this is, will be some number. We call that number mi, and we scale the mode by 1 over the square root of that number. We are going to obtain that these are what we call mass normalized modes because when you do phi i transpose times m times phi i when they have been normalized, right? In this case we call them psi. Psi transpose m psi, that equals to 1. These are called mass normalized modes and if we then rewrite the modal equation it comes to psi transpose k psi equals to lambda, which is equal to omega squared. 
The interesting thing about this is that if you basically multiply by one half, you realize that this is nothing more than the work being done by slowly moving the structure to the shape psi i, right? Because k times psi is a force by virtue of the Hooke's law, right? K, k times x is f. And that displacement times a force is work. Which basically means that most shapes with lower frequency require significantly less energy to be moved. This is the reason why most structures tend to respond in the first mode or in the lower mode because they take significantly less energy to move. So, I mean, if you imagine a mode with an omega equals to 1 and another mode with omega equals to 2, omega square in this case is 4. <coughs> omega square here is 1. So it takes 4 times <coughs> more energy to put the structure in a mo shape that has twice the frequency. <coughs> this is very important to understand the behavior of structures because it, it basically means structures are lazy and they want to stay in the low energy mo shapes. So here is a quick example. If you have a four-story shear building with equal masses and equal stiffness of every story equal to 100. This is the mass matrix. This is the stiffness matrix. And uh, the, the, the sort of the MATLAB command to compute, these are the most shapes and these are the, uh, the modal frequencies, omega square. So what comes here are mass normalized modes and what comes here are lambdas. This, this is the MATLAB command, E, I, G, K, comma, M. If you plot those mode shapes, you obtain these results. The blue is the first mode, as expected, the red is the second mode, the green is the third mode, and the black is the fourth mode. These are, again, mass normalized, and as you can see, it's a lot easier to take a structure like this and move it in this blue shape, right? You just sort of softly move it to the side. And if you want to compute the forces that are necessary to move it to that mode, you basically have to just multiply the stiffness matrix times this psi, and, and you're going to get like a modal force, right? In a sense. You can do that on your own.